Morning, guys. Welcome to Coffee Chat. Mm. Well, I'll tell you what. The week has gone by bang, just like that. And it is Friday again. And, of course, Friday means that the weekend is upon us, like I always say. And I'll tell you what. The weekend is for your family and friends. And I sure hope that you get to spend your weekend with your family and friends. Well, guys, I'll tell you. The article that I was reading this morning, what an eye-opener, absolutely. But of course, you know, in a way, you almost expect it from the source that's coming from. Now, this is coming out of the WEF, and they are demanding, get this, demanding the reduction of cars by 75% by 2050. Now, what does that tell you, guys? Where do you think the other 25% is going? <laughs> well, the 25% is going to go because, hey, they need to be chauffeured around, don't they? All these big time, big cheese head honcho type guys, they need to be chauffeured around. They need to have, you know, be able to, when they go into a city, get taxied from here to there and all that kind of stuff. 75% of global reduction in vehicles, you have got to be kidding. The rest of us will be confined to these 15 minute cities and hey, on top of that, look, it's going to be healthy for us to eat mashed up bugs while they, you know, sit and dine on beef and, you know, real meat and stuff like that. And we can have all of this, you know, TVP and various other products, you know, that are really actually not meat being told, oh, beyond meat, you know, phony meat. Yeah, that's what we all want. Well, these guys eat the healthiest, most, you know, um, bodily nutritious food and the rest of us are eating out of cans and and you know manufactured food and stuff like that guys you can't make this baloney up can you i mean it's insane when you're thinking about a 75 percent reduction in vehicles it's not just talking about think about it we're not just talking about you know people whether they have cars or not wow what else are you talking about guys do you know how much industry goes behind the global automotive industry? You think about it. Think about all the, you know, the parts and the labor and the machining and the manufacturing and all the additional parts that are made and the materials that are used to make those vehicles. Think about the paints and the metals and the wires and all the things and all the industries that are represented there in the manufacturing of all the products that go in to making the cars. Not just the individual car manufacturers themselves, but all the subsidiaries. Where do you think all of those jobs are going to go? They're going to be absolutely evaporated. And on top of that, guys, I mean, you can bring that down like literally right to the manufacturers of the paint that goes on the cars. But when you think about that, think about the multiple millions of jobs that they're talking about absolutely getting rid of when you're talking about reducing the manufacture of automotive vehicles by 75% by 2050. Look, we're talking what, in 30 years, we're gonna see a massive reduction like that? That is absolutely obscene. And what you're really talking about there, guys, is a globally dominated world by literally individual elites that think they are way, way more important than the rest of everybody else. And what matters to them, that 25% of those extra vehicles, hey, most of that would have to go into shipping vehicles like, you know, trucks and things like that. And then vehicles that will transport them while the rest of us will be zoned out and have to live in, you know, places where we could ride bicycles to or walk to us. It is absolutely obscene and goes against the very nature of what it means to be a free person and have liberty. And really, do you think that's going to aid to the pursuit of individual happiness? Hey, by 2030, according to these guys, you're going to own nothing and be happy about it. I'm telling you, it is just absolutely obscene. I'm going to literally put that article right down here into this into this video. Normally, I like it when you guys can go out, hear what I talk about, say, oh, I wonder where you got that, and do a little digging for yourself and, you know, find it and things like that. Because, hey, you know, we all don't want to be spoon-fed our information. We actually want to go out there and prepare some of those meals for ourselves, right? The answers that we find for ourselves are the ones that we believe in the most, kind of like that. But this particular one, I'm going to make it easy for everybody. I'm going to put that right down here in the link in this video because you got to read this for yourself. It is absolutely that unbelievable. But that is 
actually what's going on. Now, maybe they're putting this stuff out there for the shock value. I don't really know. But when you hear that, you kind of think to yourself, what kind of agenda is that going to lead down the road? And if you're going to think about reduction of, you know, private vehicles and ownership, what else do they got on the agenda where they're going to be reducing, you know, and what our houses and where we get to live? Nope, we can't live on in a single family home. You're all going to be in multifamily dwellings and all this kind of stuff. Mm. while well, they go out to their luxury resorts and their multi, multi, you know, million, billion dollar estates and stuff like that. It is truly obscene. It reminds me of that whole Marie Antoinette stuff, you know, when people were really struggling and they came to her and said, look, the folks don't even have, you know, enough of bread. And she said, well, then let them eat cake. They are so detached from the reality of everyday folks that it genuinely causes you to, it is mind numbing. I, I just don't understand how they can little legitimately be that detached and have this kind of elitist agenda so much so that they're, they're so detached from just average folks and the day-to-day -day life and the little pleasures that people get. And they think that they know best for this whole entire globe. Well, they know best for them, of course, because, you know, that kind of, we've been down that road, guys, haven't we? We've seen some of these totalitarian regimes in the world, haven't we? And we've seen the results of them, right? Remember the great solution back there in the World War II? I'm telling you guys, don't think. History doesn't repeat, but it rhymes. And boy, I'll tell you, this seems oddly familiar. And when you look up the background of some of these people, wow, the connections they have to some of those things back there, crazy. And yet, here's this agenda coming up again. More and more, I'm thinking... It just doesn't even make logical sense. Now, there are other leaders out there that totally oppose this absolute nonsense. And guys, those are the ones we need to get behind and truly support where we actually, you know, get behind these guys that are really out there to preserve liberty and choice and individual freedoms and genuinely that pursuit of individual happiness where you're actually able to go out there. It's a fundamental right. God put us on the earth with the intent that we would enjoy life. I came to give you life and not just life but that you might have it more abundantly. I mean, that's the heart of the Father, the one who created us. This, the, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the scripture says. Why? Because he made it, guys, bottom line. And the thing is this, from my belief and, and perspective, he wanted us to enjoy it. Yet you got all these other guys, hey, you know, in their mind, those things don't even exist. You can't build your life around that. You got to do what we think is right for you because, and, you know, we know best and we know that you guys just don't have, you know, the foresight that we do to see, you know, what's really good for you. So we're going to tell you what's good for you and you're going to be really happy about it. I'll tell you what. <laughs> mm. Guys, sometimes it's easy to get on a soapbox, isn't it? <laughs> That's a little bit of one. And no doubt I'll probably like pay for it in the comments. Who knows? But the reality is this. You got to kind of think common sense down the road. And the thing that's really genuinely healthy and the best from my estimation for us is so that we could go out there and really live the very best lives that we possibly can with what we have. And, and taking away that ability is really kind of like just kind of trying to snuff out, you know, that quintessential element of hope that we all need. Keep your hope alive. Believe in your dreams. Pursue those dreams. Dreams can come true, and they have. Don't let other folks fud you out. And, you know, literally they that have given up on their dreams, talk you out of giving up on yours. Really don't do it. It's amazing that the people that have that determination of spirit, how they're so able to go out there and achieve things for themselves that other people who have literally acquiesced to that being pressed down, pressed down, never get to achieve. It's not always about opportunity, guys. I know people in my own personal life that were born with absolutely zero opportunity, even losing their physical health, and yet their determination of spirit have allowed them to achieve 
things that you would think were absolutely impossible under their circumstances, but it was their their literal determination to not give up that got a form. And so I really hope that you can get that message. And let's get behind some of these folks out there that are generally out there fighting for us to be able to, to have that, to keep that hope alive and pursue that you know, desire for what liberty really means. So guys, I'll tell you what, I hope you're having a fantastic Friday. And until later on, when we have an excellent video to deliver to you, I sure hope you have a good one and take care.